could take state boards because I was too young. You had to be 20 years old to take state boards. And I graduated from nursing school at the age of 19. So we had a very positive, I'll call our director of nurses, <laughs> who was over the nurses at the hospital as well as the School of Nursing. Well, Ms. Lynn Hart got on her phone after I called her, and she chatted the Board of <laughs> Nursing in Atlanta, Georgia, and I got special permission to stand my boards. Uh, the boards were all done in Atlanta. There were no computers, of course. So you had three full days of testing. They didn't just test on overall nursing. They did each individual area of nursing for four hours testing at the time. When I finally got to take the boards and passed them, I joined the Georgia State Nurses Association. Today it's just GNA, Georgia Nurses Association. While I was a student, one of my professors was the president of the Georgia State Association, and I went to my first meeting in 1948 as a student in Albany, Georgia. And I thought I had really gone someplace when they <laughs> took me to Albany to a meeting. But that was my school life. Okay. When you got out of school, What's your next step professionally? Where let, did you start? Let me uh, say a few things okay. about sure. being in school. <laughs> uh, when we were in nurses training, we had to actually assemble IV tubing. Oh, you had to put all the pieces together. You had to oh, put yeah. the pieces together, mm -hmm. and they were autoclaved, and we had to sharpen needles. You didn't have Never. throwaway stuff. Nothing was throwaway. <laughs> Boil them. All linens, all pack of covering everything mm -hmm. was linens, and you had to fold it and put it in a, a pack, and it was out of clay. Uh, gloves were patched. If they had a hole in them, you patched that glove. <laughs> nothing, nothing, <laughs> nothing was, was thrown away. away. And we recycled. It's just we recycled everything, and like we said, you know. We worked our way through. Mm -hmm. and, and there was a lot of steps in that work. It wasn't just go get it and hook it up. No, it no, was, no. It was mm -hmm. from start to finish. No, and you, okay. you had to learn all the procedures, and you saw one and did one just about. <laughs> <laughs> in a hurry. In a hurry. And yeah. hurry it up. But uh, then after, after I left Crawford Long, I was going to work in Atlanta. Uh, and I did work at the hospital three to right. eleven a little while, and then I got an a offer for a job with a doctor, and had already gotten me an apartment with some of my nursing friends. Well, I came home, mm -mm. and mother and daddy <laughs> told me if I'd come home, they'd buy me a car. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think I did? He came home. <laughs> <laughs> I came home, and. At the time, I couldn't find a job in Waycross. Mm -hmm. Nurses weren't employed like that. You can get a job anywhere now, just about. But back then, uh, so Douglas had just opened the new hospital. So I came up. I came over here. I had done a little private duty over here. Uh, I remember uh, Tanner. B H B H coming to get me in Waycross one day to bring me over here to do private duty with one of his farmers. Oh, you know, and uh, he had on them boots and <laughs> <laughs> looked like <laughs> somebody you didn't want to get in the car with. But he he was a fine man. He really was. And then I started after I worked there. I uh, got a job at the hospital, mm -hmm. and I worked. The floor, you were usually, I worked 311 most of the time, and you were usually the only RN on, yes, one. on duty on 311. You worked first floor and second floor delivery room, uh -huh. and first floor was the colored. Right. And then you worked emergency room if the emergency <laughs> came in. You just had to do whatever you were. Whatever it 
you know, whatever it took. You just didn't have this lot. You had to fill whatever was needed. Mm -hmm. No. As well as supervise right. everybody else's <laughs> job. But, uh, oh, and when I first <clears throat> came to work at the, at the hospital, I lived on third floor mm -hmm. for oh, three or four weeks, I guess. Well, <clears throat> and I worked in the operating room after, at, mm -hmm. after a while. And of course, I could just go right around the corner right. and build the operating room. <laughs> <laughs> but, no commute. But as, as soon as they started getting patients in third floor, of course, we had to move back. Right. right. But it was exciting. Mm -hmm. And we were on call, of course, uh, every other weekend and all week, just about it. And we'd have to tote around a two way radio. And now, you know, it's little cell phone. <laughs> they've got the cell phone, but, <laughs> but you had to make sure you had that with you and they knew where you were. And well, when you were on call, did they have limitations about how far you could be away from work? Mm -hmm. Not really, I don't think. Because you didn't go anywhere. I remember one time we went over to a, a town and, and had a supper with some young men. <laughs> Oween and I, and uh, we had, at that time, we didn't even have a two-way radio. They would call you by phone. Well, when we got there, we asked if anybody called. Yeah, yeah they <laughs> called. So we had to turn around and run back home. And, and Dr. On. Harper was walking in the lobby, and he said, Sis, where have you been? <laughs> <laughs> but... but <clears throat> You know, they've come a long way, baby. <laughs> mm. Your first job was at the old, old Douglas Hospital out on the Nichols Road. I worked the operating room um, on call seven days a week, off call the next week, on call the next week, <laughs> seven days and seven nights. And a hundred dollars was a big paycheck. Wow. Now that was not a week. That was a hundred dollars a month. I made wow. twenty-five dollars a week in my first job. That didn't last too long. Uh, you came along. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, after that, I did private duty and I worked some for the hospital, filling in in summer vacations. And then I did uh, school nursing. <coughs> Excuse me, from about six years. And in 72, I went to the college. Mm -hmm. <coughs> My mother was a nurse and she also worked at the old hospital. Mm -hmm. She would relieve Ms. Relihan, who was the director, director of nurses at that time. Mm -hmm. We lived in Waycross, but Mother would come over and, mm -hmm. and work for Ms. Relihan. Is Ms. Relihan the one that when you walk down the she walked no, down the No, that was uh -uh. Ms. Smith. That was Ms. Smith. There's a, there is a ghost at the old hospital that walks on the floor beneath the present floor. And yeah. I'll tell you a little bit about Ms. Smith. Okay, tell us about Ms. Smith. When we lived on third floor, Joanne Rozier and I, uh, we were young girls. We were, weren't married, you know, and so we'd go out on dates. Well, if we came in and the elevator, Miss Smith could hear the elevator, so she'd know what time we came in, <laughs> and she'd have to come see, you know, if we was in or whatnot. So we got smart, and we'd put a rock in the door so we could get in. <laughs> Well, she couldn't check on so the she rock. Couldn't check on <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, the ghost in the old hospital has walked for a long time. That you know, and Miss Smith was still alive when I worked out there, but there was still something walking the halls, and you didn't like being out there eleven at night till seven in the morning unless there was at least two of you working. And if, if you went to work and there was only one person scheduled to work that night, you locked every outside door. <laughs> and if the emergency came in, they had to almost break the door down, especially if you were in the room with a patient when yeah. they came. 
But working at that old, old hospital at night um, was no fun. <laughs> and another thing that has gone from nursing that I always thought was so good for the patient was AM care and PM care. Now that can... What's that? <laughs> you would bathe your patient in the morning and give them a complete back rub. I mean a back rub. Ooh, Massage. you didn't just do a hit I like lift, that. But you gave them a back rub. You rubbed their the legs, legs and, you know, give them the some energy. Mm -hmm. And then at night, you washed their hands and face and gave them a good back rub before they went to bed, went to sleep. And I'm sure they slept better. Yeah. <laughs> at Crawford, at uh, Coffee Hospital was in the operating room. Mm -hmm. I was operating room supervisor for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. It was my family. Yeah. The doctors were my family. And of course I had a family. But you know, we had, we depended on each other. Right, you it was a team effort. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't show partiality to anybody. I found out early on you don't show partiality. <laughs> but the doctors back then respected you because you did that. Right. And your uh, employees did because you took up for them. If anything went, you were, <laughs> the doctor was supposed to come to you right and tell you about your employee and you right. took care of there was a chain of command there was. Mm -hmm. there was and people enjoyed working and they would come to work oh back in the good old days that's the good old days <laughs> that's true and and you were at the college from 70 72 two. and retired in 89 i took time off to finish my degree mm -hmm. while i was out there but I was with the high school, with the school nurses. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you occasionally read in the paper about the, the first school nurses. Well, the first school nurses are not the ones we have today. No. Mm -hmm. The first school nurses were public health nurses. Mm -hmm. And then we had school nurses in six of the schools in the county. And I went to the high school as a school nurse when you and Joanne were in high school. And then I supervised the school nurses. And while I was doing that, we organized the school nurses in the state, state of Georgia. Georgia. I remember that. So I've had a busy life in nursing. And some of the highlights have been Jean and I missed very few state nurses meetings. I have been fortunate enough in my lifetime that I was at not only the 100th anniversary of the Nurses Association, but the 75th and the 50th, and as a student at the 25th. So, you know, I've, uh, I've, I'm still a member of the Georgia State, well, no, no longer Georgia State, of the Georgia Nurses Association. I have been a member since 1949. I would imagine there are probably a few left that have been members that long, but most of my old colleagues are dead. Mm -hmm. All of my old classmates from nursing school are dead except one. Jerry did a lot for nursing. Uh, <laughs> she was a legislator, or so, so to speak, for our nursing association mm -hmm. and spoke up for us, which a lot of folks don't speak up. South Georgia, you know, South Georgia just wasn't noticed. Right. So she she really put a word in for South Georgia, and it helped mm -hmm. in our nursing. It really did. And after you left the college, you did it in services. Uh, yeah, and while I was still at the college, in the summertime, I would uh, do in-service programs for nursing homes and small hospitals that were required, their nurses were required certain subjects to do every year. And there was nobody in South Georgia offering that. So I formed my own little company and I did those services. In fact, I was doing one of those when your granddaddy died. Mm -hmm. I was out of town doing a in-service. Mm -hmm. But uh, today I still read my nursing journals I still, I don't go to meetings, 
but I am active enough that I still get invitations to the International Council of Nurses. That was a good experience too, going to Japan for the International